Hi there, it's Allie here. In this video, we're going to go over the basics of working with the Ignite UI data chart. You'll learn about the different options and settings of the chart, as well as how the axes and series relate to one another in order to render a chart. So let's get started within Visual Studio. The project that we're working with was created by using an Ignite UI project template. If you'd like to create one of your own, you can go to File, New Project, select Ignite UI, and choose Ignite UI for MVC4. In this demonstration, we're using the Razor View Engine. Also, I've gone in and added a chart controller, which is the single action result, and also the associated view, which we find over here in index.html. You can see that under Views for Chart, and then index.cshtml. If I run this page, what we get is a blank page, a canvas to work with to add in the Ignite UI data chart. Back in Visual Studio, there are two places that we need to add code in order to make this page work. First, we have to add scripts to the page. And secondly, we have to add an HTML element which will act as a container for the chart to be rendered into. Let's start by making that container. We'll make it a div and give it an ID of chart. Next, to begin working with the scripts, I'll paste in a little bit of code to get us started. You'll notice the first thing at the top here is a command to render the Ignite UI bundle. This has been set up in the bundles config to load in the Ignite UI loader. This is the script loader that will bring in any of the scripts that we need for controls on the page. Then I just have to configure the loader a little bit by telling it the script path, the CSS path in which resources will be used. By declaring a resource, I'm saying that I'm using the Ignite UI data chart in the features category. This will load in the scripts and CSS files that are required in order to render the control on the page. Now, I just add in a callback under the loader function so that once all the files are loaded, I can begin working with them on the page. Now that the page is in a ready state, I can begin working with the chart. You'll notice that with this snippet of code, I'm creating a jQuery selector against the elements down here, which is the div for the chart. And then I'm creating a new Ignite UI data chart. I've added in this empty object literal so that we can add in settings for the chart itself. If we were to run the page right now, it wouldn't work because it needs to know more information about how to render the chart. So let's go ahead and add that in. We can begin by constraining some of the dimensions of the chart by giving it a width and a height. Next, we can add a title for the chart by providing a value for the title option. You can see here it's lines of code in my super secret project. The next step is to provide some data for the chart. Now, data can come from many different places, through an Ajax request, or perhaps it's even local on the page. But for right now, I'll just create a local array that we can pass into the chart. Here, you can see the data that's set up for the chart, which shows the languages and the number of lines of code for each language in the project. Now, in order to associate that data with the chart, we have to pass that in to the data source option. So here, I'll set the data source equal to the JavaScript array named data. Next, we can add in the axes. The axes are the part of the chart that's either the X or the Y axis. With the chart, you can layer more than one set of axes. But for now, we'll keep it simple and just add in an X axis and a Y axis. So let's take a look at this for a moment. When you're working with an axis, the name is the unique identifier for the axis. You can name it just about anything you want as long as it's unique. The type of axis tells you what type of axis is being rendered. Here, you can see that this is category X, and down here we're using numeric Y. There are a number of different types that you can use for the axis, which you can learn more about in the Ignite UI documentation. For right now, this is a bar chart so we want this to show up as categorical data. And down here, for the y-axis, we want numerical data. The title of your axis shows up as the title on the chart. So you'll notice here it's language. Then down here, the label is set as language as well. But I want you to pay close attention to something. This is a lowercase l for language. Label refers to where it's getting the data out of your data source. 
So if we take a look at language up here, this part of the data matches what you're passing in for label here. If you made this a capital L, it would break because in JavaScript, it's case sensitive. By assigning a value to label, you're telling the chart where to find the data for this categorical data within your data source. In this case, it's looking for language. The next axis, or the Y axis, is named Y axis. Again, you can name it anything you want. The type is numeric Y because it's numerical data going up the Y axis, and we're giving it a minimum value. If you don't give it a minimum value, the smallest value of the chart will be at the bottom. In this instance, there would be no bar for that chart. Now I can give it a title. Let's call it lines of code. The last element that we need in order to finish up the chart is to add in the series of data that will be plotted within the chart. The series describes the data that will be plotted on the chart. Here, this series has a unique identifier, a name, which can be anything. We'll make the type a column chart. And I've even set up some basic interaction and styling with is highlighting enabled and is transition in enabled, both set to true. This means you'll see some nice animation for the bars as they run up the chart. Now I have to apply an x-axis and a y-axis. So you'll notice here that the values for both axes match the names that I gave for them earlier. Then the last thing I need to do is assign a value for value member path. You'll notice here this is set as lines of code. Now up in my data, you'll see the numeric values that we've charted here are under lines of code. By setting the value member path to lines of code, it'll be able to chart the lines of code, creating a column chart and plotting it on the axis using the language category. With that in place, we can go ahead and run the page. And there you have it, a beautiful chart built in just a few simple steps with the Ignite UI data chart. As you can see, it's so easy to get started with Ignite UI. You can go from a blank canvas to a fully rendered chart in minutes. So that's what's in development. See you next time.